dear guests, dear audience. So, uh, Lajos Haracska cannot be here, so he asked me to introduce our lab and uh, Tima Ovari. So I'm David uh, Balog, I am from the Hungarian Academy of Sciences Bio Biological Research Center uh, from the Laboratory of Mutagenesis and uh, Carcinogenesis. Our group, group leader is uh, Lajos Haracska and uh, in our group uh, we have a uh, mm, lot of people, research associates, uh, PhD students, uh, university students and uh, postdoctoral fellows. And uh, our main interest is in the DNA damage uh, tolerance pathway. So DNA in our cells is continuously under assault of uh, different DNA damaging agents. Agents, these uh, agents, agents are continuously uh, damaging the DNA and uh, these damages are uh, repaired by a lot of kind of uh, DNA repair mechanisms. Uh, but if uh, DNA uh, damage can get to the S phase, it can cause the uh, stop of the replication and uh, it can cause uh, chromosomal rearrangements and cell death. To avoid this uh, possibility, uh, DNA damage uh, tolerance pathway evolved, in which pathway the processivity factor of the polymerases called uh, PCNA uh, can be ubiquitilated by an enzyme, enzyme complex and uh, a lot of kinds of uh, uh, subpathways uh, can start. Uh, one of these sub in one of these subpathways, the ubiquitilated PCNA can be polyubiquitilated and uh, it can cause the restart of the replication fork. Uh, as you see, ubiquitilation is, uh, has a huge role uh, in this uh, pathway and one of our uh, interest is the uh, ubiquitilation of the proteins in this uh, pathway and the role of the ubiquitilation uh, in this pathway. Another field of interest is the um, uh, cancer therapy. So as you know, cancer cells are continuously dividing cells and uh, most of the uh, therapeutic agents, agents can uh, block the cell division. Uh, they can do it uh, because uh, they make a lot of DNA damages and that much DNA damages cannot be removed by uh, repair mechanisms. Therefore, replication stops and the cell dies. So mm, to give uh, more effort to this uh, mechanism, we are looking for uh, small molecules which can uh, block the ubiquitilation of the PCNA, therefore uh, block the DNA damage tolerance uh, pathway. Uh, our student, uh, Tima Ovary, uh, was a, a student in uh, Miklós Radnóti uh, Grammar School and after that she became a uh, student in the University of Szeged Fakul Faculty of Medicine. Uh, she started to work in our group uh, two years ago and uh, now uh, she will um, present her uh, results. And thank you very much. Dear guests, dear audience, I would like to speak about the analysis of the regulation of DNA damage tolerance. DNA damages in this phase of the cell cycle uh, cause uh, replication fork blockade, uh, leading to double strand break or chromosomal rearrangements, which uh, cause cancer or the death of the cell. Against this process, DNA damage tolerance is established. The main step of DNA damage tolerance is the ubiquitilation of PCNA. PCNA is the processivity factor of DNA polymerases. Ubiquitilation of PCNA is performed by ROD6, ROD18, ubiquitin conjugating and ubiquitin ligase enzyme complex. And then there's uh, three pathways, 
but for us, the most important is the polyubiquitylation of PCNA by U MMS2, U MMS2 UBC13 and the HLTF uh, complex. Uh, it won't lead to proteolysis, but its exon function is unknown yet. Uh, we researched the regulation of the DNA damage tolerance, and we found that ubiquitin and ubiquitylation has got a regulatory role. So uh, we examined the ubiquitylation of ubiquitin ligases and the inhibition of PCNA, ubiquitylation. Uh, first, I would like to speak about the ubiquitylation of ubiquitin ligases, radiatin and HLTF. We know that ubiquitin ligases also can be ubiquitylated, and we wanted to know uh, their regulatory role in uh, DNA damage tolerance. So I made uh, ubiquitylated uh, ubiquitin ligases uh, for modeling these processes. First, I generated a fusion protein, a radiating ubiquitin uh, fusion. Then I purified it from yeast. We can see here the radiating ubiquitin and here in increasing concentrations. Uh, then I made a PCNA ubiquitylation. Uh, in the first picture, we can see only the PCNA. And then I added rad 6 radiating and we can see the ubiquitylated PCNA. Uh, then I added MMS to UBC13 to the reaction, but we can see that uh, without the HLTF, uh, it can uh, polyubiquitylate the PCNA. So I added HLTF to the reaction, and we can see the polyubiquitylated PCNA here. Then I made uh, PCNA monoubiquitylation with Y-type radiating and uh, radiating ubiquitin fusion protein. And we can see that the radiating ubiquitin uh, also can uh, monoubiquitylate the PCNA. So we can say that uh, the ubiquitylation of radiating uh, can't inhibit the PCNA monoubiquitylation. Then uh, for uh, generating ubiquitylated HLTF, I had to use in vitro ubiquitylation with UBA2D2. Uh, during the purification, uh, I, uh, the GST tag was removed uh, uh, from the HLTF with the precision protease. So after the purification, I uh, could uh, separate uh, HLTF from UBA2D2 with glutathione. Uh, we can see here the UBA2D2 and the HLTF uh, during the pur purification. Uh, then I made a PCNA polyubiquitylation with uh, Y-type uh, HLTF and the uh, ubiquitylated HLTF. And we can see here that the HLTF and also the uh, ubiquitylated HLTF can polyubiquitylate the PCNA. Uh, and if I added uh, UBA2D2 to the rea reaction, uh, PCNA was only monoubiquitylated. Mono so the conclusion of uh, my experiments is that uh, ubiquitylation of ubiquitin ligases uh, can't uh, inhibit the, uh, the DNA damage uh, tolerance pathway. Then I would like to speak about the inhibition of PCNA ubiquitylation. In the first steps of ubiquitylation, uh, E1 enzyme, uh, this is the ubiquitin activating enzyme, binds uh, ubiquitin uh, via TOA-ester bond. And uh, then uh, the E2 enzyme, the ubiquitin conjugating enzyme, binds the ubiquitin via TOA-ester bond. So we uh, could uh, use TOA-ester bond formation assay uh, for uh, examining the inhibition of uh, ubiquitylation. Uh, we had to use uh, uh, 50 grades for inactivation and DTT-free buffer because these disassemble the uh, TOA ester bond formation. So uh, we could use uh, DTT uh, for negative control in our experiments. Uh, we analyzed the E1 and E2 enzymes specifically. Um, B uh, the PCNA ubiquitylation uh, can regulate the tum tumor formation. So if we can inhibit the uh, PCNA ubiquitylation, we can inhibit the uh, tumor formation. So we screened molecules for the inhibition of PCNA ubiquitylation, and we found an inhibitor molecule. Uh, so we uh, made a TOA star bond formation assay with this molecule, while we used uh, UBA1 uh, for the E1 enzyme. And uh, in this uh, three lane, uh, we uh, incubated the molecule with the ubiquitin. And the, in the last three lane, uh, lanes, we uh, incubated the molecule with the UBA1, the E1 enzyme. 
And we can see here that the molecule uh, could uh, inhibit, it, inhibit the E1 enzyme uh, during the ubiquitulation. Uh, then we uh, examined the, this uh, in inhibition in different concentrations, and uh, we can see here that the uh, molecule also uh, could uh, inhibit the ubiquitulation in 1 to uh, 10,000 dilution. So uh, we made uh, ubiquitulation with this molecule, uh, while we used uh, UBA1 for the E1 enzyme and uh, MS2UBC13 for the E2 enzyme. Uh, we wanted to uh, analyze uh, E1 and D2 enzymes, specifically uh, the effect of the molecule. Uh, and uh, in, the, in the first and uh, second lane, we can see the positive and negative control for uh, the TOA bond formation assay. Uh, then uh, in the third lane, uh, we incubated UBA1 with the ubiquitin and uh, the molecule with MMS to UBC13. So, uh, we can see that uh, uh, here that uh, the molecule couldn't inhibit the E2 uh, enzyme, the MMS to UBC13, because uh, here is the uh, complex. Uh, and then in the uh, fourth lane, we incubated UBA1 with the uh, ubiquitin, and we can see uh, here that uh, the molecule uh, could uh, inhibit uh, the UBA1 ubiquitin complex uh, too. Uh, so we wanted to uh, um, examine other E2 enzymes uh, to know that uh, the molecule is uh, specific to the uh, MMS to UBC13 uh, or not. Uh, we uh, can see here that uh, the molecule uh, didn't uh, uh, inhibit the MMS to UBC13 and we uh, have the same results from uh, for uh, other E2 enzymes, for example, UBET2T, because we uh, can see here the UBET2T ubiquitin complex also when we added the molecule to the reaction. And uh, we can see uh, the same uh, in case of UBET2D2, uh, here the complex. So the conclusion of uh, our experiments is that uh, uh, this molecule uh, can uh, inhibit the PCNA ubiquitulation uh, by inhibiting sp specifically the E1 enzyme, uh, but uh, the molecule can't uh, inhibit the E2 enzymes. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>